Welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to get back into watercolor for you. We are going to do some flowers. I'm going to do an ink and wash sketch of those flowers so you can kind of see how I do it, my process for doing it, and so forth. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, I got my bandage off my hand and my incision is, is healing well. So got the stitches out yesterday. It was really great to get it out because I was getting really sick of them being in there. And I uh, started doing massages with vitamin E oil. I take the capsules and I squeeze them onto it. And, and it's helped so much already, but it's a tight scar, so I gotta work it to get it loosened up. But, um, <clears throat> oh, and I also saw my doctor yesterday about my knee. I'm gonna go for an MRI of my knee that I screwed up climbing into bed. I felt a pop. It's either a meniscus tear or an ACL tear. I'm not sure. And also, I uh, have that problem in my hip with the tearing of the gluteus medius and minimus tendons So um, and chronic bursitis. So I'm going to go for some physical therapy. It's really a bummer that it's happening at this time of year. I would have rather gone in the winter so that my summer is free because we're leaving on vacation at the end of April. And... Um, I don't want to be in physical therapy during that time because I can't miss therapy or I'll get kicked out. You know how they do that? Your insurance cuts you off. So I'm going to have to start it after I get back, which would be in May, and then we're in summer, you know? <clears throat> so it's kind of frustrating. Well, not summer in Michigan, but summer enough. Nice weather for us. Um, today it is going up to 60, I believe. Here, No, it's already over 60 says we're at 58, but when I looked at my thermometer at my house, I believe we were at 61. I've got the door open. It is so wonderful. So wonderful. I know you people in the South who think anything below 70 is getting cold. To me, after a winter, anybody who lives in winter, this is like summer weather. I had my sweater off, but um, then I started getting uh, a little chilled from sitting still, so I put a sweater back on, but I just love it. I love it. I love it. I almost sat outside with my coffee this morning. That's how nice it was, but I was out of bed, and I didn't want to get too cool, so, <laughs> and this little guy has been having some ear troubles getting his ears to stand up, so I don't know if you can see it, but they are taped up right now. You can see that one. We are using Breathe Right strips, and it those breathe right strips are stiff enough you know the things for your nose there's there's no medicine on them or anything you just stick them on their ears and it holds their ears up um his right one he's holding up pretty well on his own his and he probably doesn't need that so much except that if he has one in his left ear he notices the difference and then he'll scratch and try to get it out of his left ear so we have them in both then I'll just change them every couple of days. They're already starting to lift a little. I think I need to shorten them. You want to go outside? Go ahead. You can go outside. Not far. Um, and then they'll probably stick a little bit better. But he's getting used to them. He, he isn't bothered by them except first thing in the morning. So I'm hopeful that this will help cure the floppy ear issue. He doesn't have very thick cartilage in the top. Now his, um, is that a hawk sitting there waiting for you? I can't tell. It might be a hawk. I'll have to watch him because I'll come down and bite him and try to take him away thinking he's lunch for all of the, the gang. So um, he's up to 17 pounds now. I've done the calculator online and they're saying that his final weight should be around 21 pounds, which is about six pounds heavier than they were telling me. Four to six pounds heavier than what they were telling me. So I don't know if it was BS um, or... What? Because he was the runt of the litter. Now, I notice some of the girls are smaller. I've seen the girls. The girls do run smaller. They're about 15 to 17 pounds, but he's up there. And I thought, well, maybe I'm overfeeding him. But now he's not being overfed because I'm being very careful about the measurements. I feed him part kibble, part homemade food. And the only reason I've still got him on the kibble is because of vitamins. I want to make sure he's getting the correct vitamins. I'm adding vitamins to his food, but the people at Balance It had me so worried about how I was going to screw my dog up if I used the recipe that I wanted to use plus 
the amount of vitamins that I wanted. They wanted me to use so much in vitamins that it was salty. I tasted it. It was salty. It was horrible. I thought, I can't feed that to my dog. So I put him back on kibble. So after he's full grown, then I'll put him back on homemade food completely. And we should be good. I'm done talking, you guys. Blah, 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 blah. And let's go ahead, turn the camera around, and I'm going to get started on the crocuses. Okay, I have several... Um, oh shoot, hang on a minute. I have several pictures here that I took this morning of some crocuses in my yard. So I am just going to mix some of these photos up. And instead of doing white <clears throat> today, I'm not sure if I want to do white. I wasn't really going to do a background with a pen sketch. Um, so I think I'll just stick with yellow and purple and maybe some pink instead of white. We can turn them pink. That'll be fine. But uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Tell me what you need, babe. You need to sit with Mama. Oh, if you're going to be up here. Hang on. Oh. I have to say, I'm really enjoying this sketchbook. This is the white um, canvas cover of the Etcher sketchbook, their mixed media sketchbook. They also have the perfect sketchbook, <clears throat> which is this one. And when I asked you guys which one you'd like to see me use next time, you guys voted on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one next. And uh, we'll just fill that one up. It's got a lot of pages. There's like 52 pages plus front and back, 104. And those are big pages. So it's going to take me a while to fill that one up. But uh, even this one is taking me a while. I still have quite a bit to go. Well, not too much. Maybe about 10 spreads. Not even. Seven spreads. <clears throat> okay. So let me start with my crocuses. I'm just going to go ahead and put one in the middle here. Let me pull you in here. I try to move you sideways a little bit so that you can see me working without my hand being in the way. It's kind of in my way, but the camera. But, oops, careful, honey. Careful. Let me move that out of the way. You're good right there. Okay, I may have to stop to let him. Now, as I'm sketching these, I am speeding it up a little bit. Otherwise, this would be a 51-minute video with all of my gabbing and my sketching and my painting and then a little more sketching. So I'm just going to speed it up a bit, and you can follow along. Crocuses are not hard at all. Just follow along with what you see kind of lining up the petal with the last petal so that you can see which is, you know, where they need to come in, where they need to end, and putting in your petals appropriately, closest petals first, and then working on your petals behind, especially if you're working with pen, pen because you can't erase the lines that go through with your mistakes. So um, you just have to be careful of that. Now I'm putting in the grasses here, and then I'm just going to add in some more crocuses. I'm not following the photos exactly. I'm just using um, the photos as reference for the shapes of the crocuses and the way the petals are moving. And this one had one petal that was already falling, and it was tucked behind this other crocus, so I thought that was a unique uh, layout to do. Now, some of them I'm putting that little extra line on, which is white in the area. I don't want to forget the white there. You don't have to put that there. Then I also um, have some that are curling in, and I have extra lines on those as well. Now, as you see me paint them, you'll see it come together a little more. Once I get the sketches in, though, that's when I will start doing the... Um, the, dark, the shadows and stuff like that. Now this one is a yellow one that fell over. It was on its side. They get very heavy. Their stalks don't seem to hold up very long. And my yellow ones do fall over. So I just put one that fell over on there. I turned my book a little bit to make it a little easier to draw the petals. That's all. Now I'm putting in another purple one here. And uh, looks like Either my book moved or my camera moved. I don't know if I moved my camera. But now we're kind of head on. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, though. Oh, gosh. With me speeding it up, it was 51 minutes. <laughs> if it was on uh, 
just regular run through, it would have been an hour and 10 minutes long. So I'll be speeding this up a little more now that you've seen me draw a few of them. Now I'm going in and doing a little more of the shading and basically I just do light scribbling rather than hash marks. I kind of like that better. I saw a friend of mine online, uh, Brie, do it that way years ago and so I tried it and I thought, you know, it actually you can keep the lines real quiet and simple and then shade them darker if you need to and I really liked the way it looked so I've always stuck with it. And people will say to me, oh, you have a very unique way of doing it. But I'm sure we're not the only two artists in the world that do things that way. So, um, but I give her credit because she is where I got it from. And you can find her over at Documented Journey. That's her YouTube channel and her, her um, Instagram. And she's got some really unique sketches. She does mostly botanicals, some animals and they're beautiful. And over the years, her art has evolved quite significantly. I really love it. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to give her credit. Now I'm going in with some, I think this violet is called Rose of Ultra, no, not Rose of Ultramarine. That's a red one. That one is called Ultramarine Violet. So it has a little bit of a bluish color to it. I really love this, this color purple. It's, it's, uh, pretty much full strength there. Well, you know, I mean, when I say full strength, I mean, that's regular strength for watercolor. Um, but I later will mix a little ultramarine blue into it to make it even deeper to uh, separate some of the darkened areas in the shadows that I also have pen on. But we'll just go ahead, finish putting that purple in. You can see I'm leaving some areas white because some of these little purple crocuses have white tips on them that kind of curl over. So that's what I'm doing here is making sure I leave the white. Now, if you don't do that, you can always go back later with white pen, which I will show you later. I'm doing it both ways so that you can see how it looks done naturally by leaving the white of the paper and also by using pen to do your white lines. Uh, the leaves also have a white line down the center on many of the plants. I think the yellow ones don't, but I'm just kind of picking and choosing here, um, not being exact. This isn't a botanical illustration for any magazine or anything, <laughs> but I um, have both. And I'll show you how I paint with the, paint the white line in by leaving a white center while I'm painting the leaves and then I'll show you how I do it with the pen. And we'll use a couple different styles of pen as well. There are gonna be a few areas where I get a little paint on the outside of the flower petals at one point. I accidentally drag my hand through that yellow petal on the bottom, but you'll see how I fix it later. I just use my pen and I add more petals and it works out just fine. Also, if you're wondering about the colors that I used here, the yellow was Hansa Yellow Light and then I used Permanent Yellow Deep uh, for the other deeper yellow color. For the greens, for the most part, I'm using sap green and I'm using a little bit of French ultramarine in order to darken certain areas later. I also use phthalo yellow green for some of the lighter areas. Now the phthalo yellow green is not necessary. You can always use a little bit of sap green um, and then add a little more yellow to it and you'll be fine. Or if you're mixing your own greens, just using a little more yellow helps. I 
can see how I'm going up the sides of the leaves and leaving the center white. Sorry, I think that was my dog who flashed by there real fast. Um, and then I will fill some of those in, but you can see how I'm doing it here. This is my normal speed. Now I'm adding the ultramarine blue into my violet and making it a bit darker to darken the shadowed areas. And now I'm done painting, so I'm going back in with my pen and I'm going over some of the lines again where I feel it needs it. And any place that I kind of painted outside of the lines, I'm readjusting my sketch slightly. And you'll see when I get down to the yellow on the lower left how I do that. Now here you can see that I have some yellow that went over the line there. So I'm just going to add another petal in right there, right behind it. And it looks like it's meant to be there. And I will do that again down here next to this long one. There's one that comes out somewhere down here. Oh, right there. That's where it is. I put an extra one in there. And now it looks like I didn't go outside of the lines. <laughs> so that's how you fix your sketches when you use ink. Makes it very easy. And, you know, sometimes you can't do that because of the way the sketch is or what you're painting. But for flowers, it's pretty easy to fudge it. I decided to add a little bit of color to that sketch on the left hand page. I don't know, I, maybe I should have left it without color. I kind of like it without the color, but I went ahead and added color. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and let you watch it, and then that'll be the end of the video. I'm gonna finish this up real quick, just painting in these tree trunks and the tree, and that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. Oh, and the ground cover. I'm using some raw umber and lunar black on the tree, and then I mix some jadeite and another green for the um, pine, and that's pretty much it. So remember everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. I will see you all soon. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.